Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophynet the Babbling Belgian, and welcome to Horizon. Welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn, the Frozen Wilds expansion. We're still in the shrine at the Ice Rasps, or uh, well, the facility at the Ice Rasps, and we need to climb up this elevator shaft next, I think. Going up. So we're looking for Aurea, the shaman that should uh, be able to tell us a bit more about the demon, the daemon. Uh, wreaking havoc on the cut and the surrounding area which is uh, frenzying the machines into attacking everybody again sounds like a bit of the the starting point of horizon zero dawn itself where the machines were getting uh, more and more aggressive fresh air ahead fresh air ahead okay so that means we're getting back to the surface then i suppose that seems closed off this looks like some sort of launch tube. Like it would be used to launch a missile of some sort. Okay, this looks lovely. Maybe I can get back inside through that structure over there. Oh, of course, now there's a campfire. I wanted to save to end the previous episode on a on a high note, but we kept risking it to uh, keep the episode going. To get to those stairs. And then, well, that's going to be a risky jump. This doesn't look so stable. Oop. There we go. I can't feel my... I can't feel much of anything in this. Yeah, indeed, because it must be freezing up here. Well, now that we're here, let's just quick save. There we go. And while we're at it, I'm just going to continue on then. Would have been way too soon to take a little break now, would it? Uh, let's... Yeah. Let's enter Oria's retreat. I think they might not be so happy that we just uh, trespass on their area here. Yeah, indeed. There's another text message over here. Stage 2 complete from Kenny. They didn't kill him yet. All star, first stage of main facility complete. It's with pride that I announce the completion of the first level of infrastructure on our primary facility. This compound will be the nerve center for our project and will require the team's continued best efforts to realize by the deadline. But even though there is much more to be done, you should be pleased with all you've accomplished so far. Huh. Please find attached a detailed plan for mustering out of the auxiliary space which will serve as a contingency site as we proceed with the main facility. 90% of our personnel must be relocated, relocated by 5pm Wednesday. If your name does not appear on the assignment list, please email Marissa with me in CC. Your dedication, talent and intelligence remain daily sources of inspiration. Dr. Kenny Chow, Project Director. I thought... The other guy was the the tyrant was the hmm was the boss, but Kenny seems to be the director. So why was Anita afraid of well her relationship with the boss coming well public? I think Belvin was the name of that tyrant employer or well I don't know sta station chief. So this was supposed to be for the Firebreak project, because we've been hearing more about that. We don't know what it is yet, but this was supposed to be a starting site from where they uh, started that construction for the main facility. Aha! Menu prank from Kenny Chow. Someone hacked the menu board to display obscene messages about our colleague, Mr. Blevins. Is this the most advanced geological project ever undertaken, or a junior high locker room? Come on, people. Okay, and there is an extra message attached to it. Uh, all staff. At an assembly of our country's finest scientific minds recruited to address a grave threat to national safety, it would be fair to expect more mature conduct than that demonstrated yesterday in the canteen. Mr. Blevins plays a crucial role in the successful execution of Firebreak, and it is due the respect and is due the respect both of his title and of his many contributions to the project. Any further interference in the menu boards will necessitate my direct personal involvement. And then a s separate email towards Anita. Anita, was it you, winky face? 
that is interesting. So he does think that Anita was responsible. And I think he has a personal relationship with her. That's what the messages indicate. But he made a big statement of it towards the rest of the personnel, obviously. Okay, seems like we're here. Aurea? Hello? Oh, that's another yes, one of those locks. As I've asked a thousand times. Speak to me. What more would you have me do? Oh, she's Is gonna there be no pissed. Prayer that will reach you? No mark that will break your bonds. Ah. I can't help you if you won't speak. Her outfit looks pretty open to be in this weather. Ask to guide me. Hello. Um, no. How? How did you get here? The way was sealed by the spirit herself. I... I used one of these. Yeah. You can fix that again if you want I to. I show you. Yes, show me. Please. Okay, she seems really, really desperate. So do I just... Activate the source node. I see something purple over there. Sorry. Collectibles and the like. What's this? Pick up animal figurine four. Is that part of the... Yeah, it looks like it's this probably. The a looming impressive animal. Yeah, a freaking bear. Like the machine version that tried to kill me earlier. Voice lock with text. Minimal data corruption. Incommensurable. Kenny and I don't need to fight about the laundry, so instead we fight about incommensurability and restrictions on machine intelligence. Okay. That was short. I had an argument with Kenny this afternoon when a couple's first fight hinges on the Turing Act. You know you're dealing with some really se real sexy nerds. I won the argument, I guess, but I'm less concerned whether or not I can pull this off than with the ethical implications of our succeeding. I promised Kenny that the suit of coping... The suite? The suite? The suit? The suite of coping mechanisms I've designed... The suite of coping mechanisms I've designed with help will help manage any emotional fallout from the software, but privately, I'm less confident. I'm a programmer, not a shrink. The minutia of robo-ethics do start to seem less relevant when a refusal to supply firebreak with the necessary conditions for its success comes at the cost of millions of lives. It's worth putting one consciousness at risk to save so many other isn't, others, isn't it? Uh, trying to solve this with numbers makes me feel like a sociopath. So it, they were definitely trying to do something with artificial intelligence again. But what was it supposed to do? Security measures. So from Kenny to Anita. Anita, as much as I hate the fact that Blavins installed lambent orbicular technology on the lower security door, I admit that for the auxiliary data center it makes sense, especially given our goals for the central processing unit. I'm sure you're painfully familiar with the process by now, but just in case you need to forward instructions to your team, and that's the rest of the explanation again. So probably just in case if you missed the first text. That's the bunker door, which is probably going to be opened by this thing. So that's activated. And now we have an audience, because Aurea is going to be pretty amazed by what we're doing here. Aha. Uh -huh. I'll bet the goal's the same. Get the light back to the source. Aha, but this one is a bit more complicated, clearly. Um... Let me see. I would think that you keep this going as far as you can. Like this. And then... Yeah, I think like this. Although, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I need to check out the, f the outer circle first. 
So either like this. Or like that. So we're starting to get there. I think if I just make a circle... Because it's, it's getting easier to turn this around. Probably now this one. There we go. Yeah, we're almost there. So if you work your way on the outer circle, things start to make sense a bit more. And then I just need to turn this one twice. There we go. Auxiliary channel recovered. Exploit successful. What the hell is this? Evaded. Is someone there? Orea? Orea, I need you. Okay. You brought the spirit's voice back. So that was that that were two separate AIs, so the spirit and the daemon. And the daemon clearly has the ability to override the spirit and trying to take everything over. Sounds like Hades. You heard it. The voice of the spirit calling to me from the heights of Thunder's drum. She was able to throw off the bonds of the daemon for a moment. Because of what you did. Yeah. Who are you? And what do you want? I'm Aloy. Naltuk sent me. He thought that you could use my help. He was not mistaken. You've been a... Revelation. Now I know for certain that the spirit endures. Perhaps together we can find a way to set her free. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I came all this way for answers, and so far... I haven't heard any. It seems to me that you are the answer. But of course, I'll tell you all I can. Ah, uh, those blue wires still look horrible. But hey, silence. Bergren said you might know something about a man named Silence. That you may have had dealings with him at the Conclave? When that name is spoken, secrets soon follow. Or vanish, as the case may be. Why do you want to know? He's... done some terrible things. But he's also helped me when no one else could. I don't know as much about him as I'd like to. I would imagine his aid is very powerful. But it will not come without cost. Unfortunately, I am sworn to an oath of secrecy by the Conclave on this matter. Interesting. I don't get that. But you and I are trying to help each other, right? Yes. But I would be breaking an oath, and that... I cannot do. Okay, I can understand that, which is interesting. Oh, what's even more interesting is that the option is still highlighted. About silence? I've told you all I can. There's nothing more I can say. Because we know that at the end of the game, after the credits, silence captures Hades. You seem to have a history with this voice, this spirit. Yeah, because it was calling out to her. Here, years ago, during the war with the Karja. A raid scattered my Warak. I was cut off, alone. I lured the enemy into the Rhyme Drifts, hoping to lose them in the mist, but they endured, so... I took refuge in this cave. It's not a cave! That's when I heard a voice. A wanderer. Lost, like me. A spirit of the blue light yet sundered from it. She asked me for aid. She chose me. But I was in no position to help, not with the Karja after me. So she helped me first. By closing a door on the mountain below, one you must have opened to get here. Locked by means similar to those found in this room. It kept the Karja from reaching me. Safe from them. I was able to do as she asked. Interesting. And the spirit wanted help. Because it's interesting that it's... I feel like Firebreak is a separate project from Project Zero Dawn. What did the spirit want from you? She said she was hurt. Incomplete. She needed bones. Parts not unlike what you'd find in a machine. They were here, in this room. She wanted me to bring them to Thunder's Drum. So I did, and she showed me how to heal her. So began our communion. Okay. You had a communion with the spirit. Yes. 
Inside, Thunder's drum is a room like this one, only larger, with an altar. I went there many times to speak with her. What did she say? She told me she was lost and needed my help. She asked questions about our lands, our tribe, and she listened with patience, with wisdom. I told her things long kept silent about my family, my dreams, my fears. She never tired of me, never judged. We kept each other's company. But yeah, we know that probably the spirit is an AI, but I do love how their their hats <laughs> something completely different, but I do love how their hats are always one of the machines we fought. So hers is I think a sawtooth. But yeah, back to the subject. What is the spirit? Aurea. What do you think the spirit is? I see. You are not Banuk, and our songs are not familiar to you. You do not know of the blue light. That which struggles to survive in our hearts and animates the machines. The essence of life, and in its purest form. Harmony. As the anger of the machines grows, this light has faded from the world. And the spirits it sustains are stranded. That's what she is. A lost soul. Cut off from what it needs. Lonely. Forsaken. I must help her. We must. I'm not sure if I understand. But I want to. That's all I need. Okay. Now what about the daemon? How did he get into play? The daemon. What do you know about it? I spoke with the spirit many times. First here. Then inside Thunder's drum. The last time. She told me she was under attack by something that could not be seen by mortal eyes. Something... Evil. She named it the Daemon, and said it needed her power to do what it willed. And she begged me for help, to find a way to destroy her if necessary, to keep it from using her. That was five years ago. I didn't hear her voice again, until today. Okay. And what about the last what time? What kept you from the spirit, after it begged for help? I went to Aratok, hoping he could protect her. But the war with the Karja still raged, and before I could reach him, I was ambushed by the Mad Sun King's kestrels and taken to Meridian in chains. I wasn't able to return to Thunder's Drum until long after the liberation, not until last thaw. Okay, but eventually you returned, but by that time the you daemon said took you returned over. returned to Thunder's Drum. That was the expedition that went bad. I saw the funeral. Yes. Once there was finally peace with the Karja, Aratak and I gathered a Warrock of great hunters to defeat the Daemon. And yet, the old door to Thunder's Drum was gone, replaced by a gate we could not pass, and many machines. We were crushed. Aratak called a retreat, but we had already lost our best. We abandoned them to the snow as we fell back. After. He and I could not agree on what to do next. He wanted to attack again. So I came here, hoping against hope to hear the spirit again. And because of you, I did. That explains a lot. Thank you, Aurea. Let's go to Thunder's Drum. That Let's might be a bit too see fast. If I got but... this straight. We heard two voices. When you call the spirit. Captured somehow by the one you call a daemon. Whatever this daemon is, it's related to the machines and why they've become more dangerous. I want to know how. Both the spirit and the daemon are on a mountain, Thunder's Drum. So why don't we go there and figure out what it all means? We can't. Thunder's Drum is dangerous more than you can imagine. The daemon has secured it. Besides, Aratak won't let us go. As chieftain, he controls the pass to the mountain. And he can't be reasoned with. Sounds like you need a new chieftain. Ha! Huh. There's an idea that's certain to win us friends. Huh. You said you were a hunter. And I'll wager you're not an ordinary one. It's not impossible. Even for an outlander. 
and Aratok couldn't refuse the challenge if you were known among the Werak. <laughs> Wait, uh, me challenge Aratok? I don't want to be chieftain of anything, much less a bunch of Banuk that don't want me. But you want to go to Thunder's Drum, don't yeah, you? Yeah, kind of. You heard the spirit. She is suffering, tormented by the daemon. She longs to be free. And perhaps, when released from her bonds, she can give you the answers you seek. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. Fine. Yeah, we don't have a reason to this what do time, I have to but do? fine. Get the Wirak's attention to show the worth of your claim. Win at the hunting grounds. Kill bandits that prey on the cut. Or speak to my friend Sakuli. You help her. You'll definitely get noticed. That sounds like the Is most there a interesting bit. In the area? Yes, near the frost figures. But it's been frozen in ice for generations. What does that have to do with anything? It'll help. Trust me. Maybe even more than I thought. <sighs> if you say so. A frozen tall Do all you can. When the time comes for you to throw your spear at Aratok's feet, I will be there to back your claim. Until then, I'll be here to answer any questions you have about the challenge. Oh. And one more thing. In the box over there is a weapon, like my own. Take it. You may find it useful. A weapon? Weapon? I want a weapon. Storm Slinger? Ooh, that sounds nice. The Banuk Storm Slinger. Uh, and six Blue Gleam. Okay, 10,000 experience points, six Blue Gleam, and an extraordinary reward box. Let's check that out um, for the Wirak. So that is already active. Let's go to inventory. The Nuke Storm Slinger weapon box. The Nuke Storm Slinger and Storm Bolt. Stuck the Shaman's Path. Indeed, we did. The Nuke Storm Slinger. I'm guessing it's something that can fire stuff. Storm Slinger. Let's equip that instead of the Rope Caster for now. Oh, what the hell is this? Is this? Oh, I need to charge it. Please. Jesus. Okay, then. It's just, it's a, sh it's a shocking shotgun. That is interesting. That is interesting. Might want to run around with this for a while. Um, so thank you, Aurea, for your explanation do you have anything else in your your little lair here doesn't look like it i have a lot of objectives now because we can well we can probably go to the tall neck take out the bandits uh the hunting grounds and then her friend we needed to help out let's open the door and get out of here so yeah hunting grounds bandit camp sekuli and repair and override the tall neck Sounds like a lot of work. Uh, there's a volcano. I'm probably not going to do the the bandits and the like on video. Or maybe even completely edit it down so you get to see what happened there. But not necessarily anything else. Cold. Very cold. I get it. Yeah, we get it too. Let's take it. This place is... Lo look how they did the snow. Okay, that looks a bit weird, but... I love how we just sink in and how it looks, because it's freaking realistic. Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking around at the snow and everything around it. Fire kiln root. It looks like we need to go down again. And it seems like we're in the at the point where we need to do some menial tasks to continue. So uh, might have been a bit of a shorter episode than usual, although it probably must be somewhere around 25 minutes, so should be fine. So I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And next up, we're going to do... Uh, well, I'm going to override the tall neck and then go talk to Sekuli. Oh, oh, that's another one of those scorchers, probably. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do next time. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, thank you guys enormously for watching, and see you guys next time. Goodbye!